Startup Nation, I owe an apology. When we started this show almost two years ago, my goal was to help not only provide you with great content, but to also be there for you to help you write your entrepreneurial story. But I haven't been there for you lately, have I? Even though I said on Facebook that I would be gone for a while for the summer, I have could have done a, a better job in keeping you updated on things. We'll get into that a little bit later. My point is this. The relationship between a podcaster and his audience is extremely important. And it's one that not only do I not take lightly, but I also recognize that I didn't hold up my end of the bargain. Just know that I always had the intentions to come back to you, Startup Nation. And that I know that the reason the startup life is successful is because of you. And I will never forget that. My name is Dominic Lawson, and this is The Startup Life. Let's begin. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother... Hey, Startup Nation. Do you enjoy the startup life? Now you can let the world know with gear from the show. Choose from the label yourself, make your own look, and making money t-shirts to tell your story of your path of entrepreneurship. Click the link in the show notes to purchase. All right, Startup Nation. So I hope you're ready to receive some value today. As you can tell, I am back, Startup Nation. I'm so glad to be back. Thank you for having me back. I really do uh, like talking to you, Startup Nation. So in the first segment, I'm going to explain to you where the hell I've been, what the hell I've been doing, because you you have earned that startup nation. The thing is, I've been gone for almost three months now, and so you have earned the right to know what's been going on. So I'm going to share that with you. In the second segment, as you know, uh, Nike has decided to make Colin Kaepernick uh, the face of their 30 year Just Do It campaign. And so there's a lot of business uh, things that we can learn from this. Uh, you know, we're going to talk about, you know, why Nike decided to do it, why they decided to do it with Colin Kaepernick and a slew of other things as, as entrepreneurs you can really learn from. In the next segment, in the third segment, right before the break, we're going to talk a little bit about Le'Veon Bell. Uh, now, he really is using the entrepreneurial mindset when it comes to his contract negotiation with the Steelers. And so we're going to dive into that a little bit and what you can probably learn from that as well. And then we'll go to break. And then lastly, uh, in the fourth segment after break, we'll talk about the telltale signs of, you know, when you may be time to take a break from your business. Look, there's a times where you, you get burned out and there's not a lot of flow of energy and a flow of ideas into the business. Sometimes you need to hit that reset button. We'll talk about that. And lastly, Startup Nation, before we cut out, when we'll talk about uh, things you can do while you're on break, right? You know, you don't necessarily have to completely unplug from the business. And we'll talk about why that's a good thing, the benefits of unplugging from your company and from your business and your entrepreneurial journey. So Startup Nation, I hope you're ready to receive great value today on episode 75, by the way, and let's take flight. So Startup Nation, once again, let me just say thank you for having me back. I I have missed you guys so much just because I was gone doesn't doesn't mean I didn't think about you or the direction of the show and we'll get into that a little bit but the thing is when we started this show almost two years ago I anytime I had the notion of not doing an episode or anything like that I felt I felt terrible I felt terrible I felt like I was doing you startup nation a disservice I felt like you know it was just one of those things where I just didn't want to let you down I did not want to let you down because you matter to me so much. The energy that you provide to me, the energy that I hopefully give back to you, that that relationship matters a lot to me. And so it, it got to a point where, you know, I had to take a break because, uh, you know, I felt like the, you know, for starters, I felt like the show, uh, you know, could could be doing more to give you more. Right, Startup Nation. And I know, I know many of you is like, no, we like the show, you know, the way it is. And I, and I appreciate that. But at the same time, I, I think I was shortchanging you, but I wasn't really sure how to go about doing that. 
And so I really wanted to kind of step away for a little bit to kind of see if I can, you know, brainstorm some new ideas, brainstorm some some new segments or wherever the case may be. And we'll actually kind of play along with some in this episode of Startup Nation, as you can kind of notice. The thing is, like, I really did na- take a vacation, even from my parent company, Owls. Like, we hadn't taken a, a great vacation in, oh my goodness, at least three, four years, right? It's been a situation where we've just been hitting the pavement, hitting the grindstone, just like really trying to scale the company and scale the growth of the company. And it's actually, you know, started to pay off Um, over the summer, the beginning of the summer. Uh, right when I released episode 74, we had our uh, summer teaching institute, which was a big time success. And that's, uh, like I said, another one of the reasons where I had to step away so I can make sure it was a success. Right. And so uh, that was a big success. We had a lot of great feedback. Those teachers that came to our our summer institute are doing really well in the classroom. We've been getting amazing feedback from them uh, on that note. And then also. Um, after that, I uh, maybe about two weeks after that, uh, my kids like, so I, you know, my wife and I, we have a daughter, but I was married before. And so my two older kids came for the summer. And so I wanted to give them all of the time that, you know, they earn cause I don't get to see them that often. Right. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, they had time with pops. And so I understand that I had to take away, you know, that from startup nation to give that to my kids. And I hope you forgive me for that but I, I i love them so much and i don't really get to see them that often so i really wanted to take that time uh to do that but also we were asked to present at not one but two conferences over the summer as well one was down in uh, jacksonville florida for the black educators rock national conference which was such an amazing event we had a wonderful time there in jacksonville so we had the kind of, you know, prepare for that, make sure that went dope because it did go dope. Um, had to make sure that went well. And then also we uh, when we came back from that, we had like maybe a, a week break. And then we went da- back down to Florida, to Destin, Florida, where we actually had a, a, a true, true vacation. My wife's family reunion took place in Destin, Florida. And so I got the, some time to spend on the beach with the kids. And my wife. And so, like, you know, I know we talk about scaling a company, building building your dreams and this that, and the other. But Startup Nation is one of those things where that's the epitome of life. Being on the beach with your kids and your wife. Everybody's laughing. Everybody's having a good time. It's like summer break. Like, it can't get any better than that. And Startup Nation, as you're building your company, as you're building your dream you know, and, and really forging on your entrepreneurial journey, take the time to take those moments. Because the thing is, is like, great, it's great to have like a really successful company. But if your kids resent you, and your wife resents you, what was it all for? Like, seriously, what was it all for? Like, I know money can buy a lot of things, but it, it, it can't put a smile on your daughter's face. Not organically. I mean, you can buy her something like a new cell phone or a car, whatever the case may be. But even when you do that, she will resent you for not being there, not taking those times. Your son, you know, your wife, husband, wherever the case may be, they'll resent you for that. So it's important to kind of, you know, step away every so often to kind of focus on what really matters. Okay, because your family really matters. So we had a great time on the beach in Destin, Florida, and then we came back home and literally Startup Nation, like no lie, literally one day's rest, and we were back on the road to Nashville, okay? So I want you to picture this, okay? In a span of about 12 days, 12, 13 days, we went from Jacksonville, Florida, I'm sorry, Memphis, Tennessee, to Jacksonville, Florida, back to Memphis, Tennessee, then drove to Destin, Florida. Tongue out in Destin, Florida on the beach. Came back to Memphis, Tennessee. One day's rest. And then shoot up to Nashville for the Tennessee Charter School Center a Regional Conference up in Nashville. Where we, once again, killed it. Crushed it. Whatever you want to you know, uh, 
verb you want to put in there that we did. We did that. Uh, had an amazing time there. Got some really good connections there and then came back home. So all the while, it, it was just really hard to to be able to you know record new content, record new episodes. Right. So it's like true enough. I was not here, but at the very least, I was out, you know, really practicing what I preach here on the startup life. I was out there really scaling, grinding, like putting the work in, you know, a lot of times, you know, a lot of overnights. And what I mean is like, you know, working very late into the night, a lot, a lot of heated discussions between uh, my wife and I, as far as the direction of the company and this, that and the other. But that's OK. Right. Like, you know, if you start a company with your wife or your husband or your, your spouse or uh, your partner, or wherever the case may be, or your best friend, or wherever the case may be, like those discussions are going to happen. And that's okay. As long as you compartmentalize, like, look, this is for the business. And you understand, which is more importantly, that you're both doing what's in the best intention of the business, right? And those things are okay. And so it, it, it was just one of those things where I had to focus on owls in order to keep creating episodes for the startup life, right? And so that was wildly successful. We've uh, we've gotten contacts from Nebraska, contacts from upstate New York, contacts from Florida. Uh, matter of fact, somebody called last week and like, hey, we want to purchase some curriculum down here in Tallahassee because we need help. Right. And so we get the, you know, get the, you know, send them out a, a invoice, get paid for that. That may I can buy more equipment for the startup life. So it really is not only a sacrifice for me, Startup Nation, to take away you know, to go away from the show, but I understand it's also a sacrifice for you too. You sacrifice not giving the content that you normally get in order for us to scale the company. And so I thank you for that startup nation. I really do. And so, uh, I had put on Facebook that had all every intention to come back in August, right? I had, I had new episodes lined up. Uh, I had some, you know, some other new ideas for the show to line up. I even had ideas for new shows, Right. But I'll get into that in a second. But the thing is, like the 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 contacts and the and the and the presentations went so well that, you know, uh, a major uh, organization here in Memphis that has very deep pockets asked us for a portfolio. What happened was we presented in Nashville. Uh, We didn't have a really big crowd, but apparently the right people were in there. Because one of those people uh, has asked us for a contract and we're going to service that contract coming up in November doing some teacher uh, team building exercises. But another person who was in there was part of uh, this organization that funds very big um, educational projects here in the city of Memphis. Uh, She she took us to lunch. She because she she said, look, I know and she really cut to the chase as soon as lunch starts. Like, look, I'm gonna cut to the chase. Uh, when I went into your session, you know, first of all, I'm not an educator, but I really loved what you were doing from top to bottom, from beginning to end. I loved every moment of that session. And I think it's the ideas that you present in that session can really benefit not just the, the students in the city of Memphis, but also nationwide. So um, this is what I want you to do. I want you to create this, you know, this business portfolio. Uh, you know, or if you already have a portfolio, tighten it up and present it to us. Give us that. And, um, and just to let you know that we don't cut small checks. And so when she said we don't cut small checks, she gave us a frame of reference. She said that, you know, we fund Teach for America. We fund other big multi-million dollar nonprofits in the city of Memphis. And so start of nation, like, what am I supposed to do here? Right. It's one of those things where it's like you have to jump on that opportunity. And then another organization, the National Black MBA Association, that asked us to provide some ACT services for their Leaders of Tomorrow program. These are like juniors and seniors in high school who are trying to, you know, get ready for the ACT, things of that nature. And so, you know, when those two things came to, you know, to a fruition or whatever, or those two opportunities presented themselves, we had to jump at it. And so that meant my time and resources had to go to that. And so, you know, once again, like when you see these opportunities and they pop up, it's like you you don't want to be the 
woulda, coulda, shoulda person. You want to be the person that said, look, I don't know what's going to happen, but fuck it. I'm just going to go for it and see what happens. Right. And so once that all got squared away, that's why I put another tweet out there uh, on Twitter and a post on Facebook. Follow the Startup Life podcast on Twitter and on Facebook. I do have updates on there all the time or uh, at the very least, I'm going to do my best to do better about updates. But um, that's why I put out there like, OK, OK, that's squared away. We got the ACT session out the way. We got the portfolio out of the way. We signed up some new contracts, this, that and the other. OK, it's time for Startup Nation to have me to come back. And so here I am. And so once again, and I can't apologize to you enough. First of all, thank you for lending me your ear. Thank you for having me be part of Startup Nation because Startup Nation doesn't belong to me. It belongs to you. Okay, it's like true enough. I get on here. I get on this podcast and I talk where the case may be. But Startup Nation doesn't belong to me. It ain't about me. My it's one of those things where when you have a team, everybody has a role. This is my role in Startup Nation. And so thank you for having me back. You know, I hope you're not too mad at me, but also know that, you know, I, I never intended to stop the show. I never intended to stop the show. You know, I heard some rumors out there. It's like, you know, he's going to end the show. That was never the case. I've always intended to come back. It's just that the business was growing. And so we had to take advantage of that. But, you know, some of the things that I learned, you know, or that came from being away from the show was that, you know, look, the startup life could be a lot better. And, and and then also there are other topics that, you know, entrepreneurs can, you know, benefit from. I even had ideas for totally different shows. And so as we talk about Colin Kaepernick later on and we talk about Le'Veon Bell, you know, that's actually an idea that I'm going to work through that may spark a whole nother podcast. Right. Uh, you know, I really think you're going to enjoy Some of the changes, now some of the stuff, you know, I'm going to try some things out. If it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, it doesn't. That's fine. But just know that any content you get from the show is going to be good. I'm sorry. I know, you know, I may probably want to sound humble or something. I'm not for to sound humble. I know the content is good because I hear the people say like this very great, valuable content. You have helped me in my business. You know, please keep doing what you're doing. And so you have entrusted in me, Startup Nation, to always you know, not only to provide you with great content, but to innovate as well. So that's what's been going on. That's where I've been. You know, um, I hope that explains everything. If you ever have any questions about, you know, where I've been or where I'm, if I'm coming back or wherever the case may be, you know, feel free to email us. You have our email address, counsel at askoutsolutions.com. Hit me up on Facebook. Hit me up on Twitter at the Startup Life Podcast on Facebook and Twitter. I think I may start an Instagram account. I'm not sure, but we'll we'll see about that. But like, you know, always reach out reach out to me. If you feel like I've been gone too long, hey, like Dominic, I've been gone too damn long. Like, all right, cool. Let me go and come back. Like, oh, this is what I'm working on. I'm coming back. Right. But um know that, you know, I will take breaks, you know, in the future. But what I will do is do better about communicating with you more during those breaks. Cause that's something I can do better. So I hope you forgive me, Startup Nation. All right, so moving right along. So as you know, Startup Nation, uh, the this past week, Colin Kaepernick was named the face of Nike's 30-year Just Do It campaign. And as a person who's been wearing Nike since, oh my goodness, since I was a kid and have recently read, you know, the book uh, Shoe Dog by Phil Knight, which is an excellent book, Startup Nation. I highly suggest that you read Shoe Dog. Because not only does it tell you, you know, the story of Nike and how it came to be and, you know, and and this that, and the other, but it also reads like a novel. It doesn't read like a typical auto, you know, uh, biography. It really does read like a novel. So it's a great story. It's a great book. Really highly suggest that you read that book. But, you know, I got many people to ask me, you know, what's my take on this notion? You know, what's. You know, how do you feel about that? How you feel about people burning shoes and cutting Nike signs off socks and stuff? You know, and when it comes to that part, the burning of shoes and this and the other, look, I mean, I take the easy E approach from straight out of Compton. Look, they already bought them. Okay, you can do whatever whatever you want to do with them. You already bought them. Okay, 
I don't understand why you burn something after you bought it. And I guess it's symbolism or whatever the case may be. You know, do you, boo? That's all I can say. You know, and I thought it was funny that, you know, when when Ford also backed uh, the NFL players, you know, rights to protest, whatever the case may be. I was wondering, I was waiting for F1, you know, Ford F-150s to start being burned up. But that didn't happen. It is what it is. You know, it sounds like fake outrage to me. Like, don't get me wrong, right? Like, I am a U.S. veteran. I'm a veteran of the U.S. military. Anytime I hear the national anthem or I see the flag, I'm going to stand up because, you know, as a veteran who, you know, believes in the ideals of this country, who believes in, you know, what this country really can be, I will stand up. But on the flip side, I will never, ever tell somebody how to protest. And as a black man in America myself, I understand exactly why Colin Kaepernick Neal. I understand exactly why NFL players, you know, take a knee as well. Because I know that life very much so. Now, granted, I don't know the Startup Life podcast and every other medium that I write on or or whatever the case may be isn't as large as being on CBS or, you know, NBC or Fox on Sundays. But, you know. I do know and respect and understand the responsibility of having a medium to express how I feel about stuff. Not everybody has that. And so when I think about Nike and, um, you know, and and their approach to this notion of, of, of having Colin Kaepernick, you know, be the face of the 30 year, just do a campaign. It's one of those things where it falls in line with what Nike has always done. And this dates back to the 68 Olympics. This is something that Nike has always done, that rebellious go against the grain nature. And it all, you know, it goes back to the Nike Cortez in the 68 Olympics in Mexico. So brief story. What happened was, uh, you know, Nike was still under the blue ribbon Uh, Onisuka brand in Japan and they wanted to make a debut their shoe this really cool shoe at the 68 Olympics and they wanted to call it the the Aztec or the Azteca because what usually happens is uh, their their uh, U.S. competitor Adidas had a, a a notion or a tactic of always naming a shoe of the whole city it was in Mexico City Aztec this that and the other Right. And so they want, no, no, they had Adidas had the Azteca. And so Nike wanted to call their shoe the Aztec. But since Adidas already had the Azteca, they couldn't do that. And so Bill Bowerman, Phil Knight's coach, uh, Phil Knight, founder of Nike, Bill Bowerman was his track coach at Oregon. And he he actually worked on the Cortez and uh, was one of the kind of the 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 uh, founding fathers of Nike as well. Uh He's, he said when he found this out, he was like, look, uh, OK, so we can't have the name the Aztec. Wait a minute. Who is that guy that defeated the the Aztecs in Mexico, that Spaniard guy? And feels like, you mean Cortez? Like, yeah, let's name it the Cortez. And so there you go. That's why we have the Nike Cortez. It was a rebellious act against Adidas having the name Aztec, Aztec, right? Or Azteca, if you will. And so once again, that speaks to the, the rebellious nature of going against the grain of Nike. And so when you go back to 80, it was like 85, 86, 87, 88, when, when Air Jordan hit the scene, you know, that basketball brand and Nike was not very big at that time, but they put all their bet on Michael Jordan to be like, you know what? We're going to go with this guy and see what happens. I don't need to tell you the story of how that worked out. Okay. Once again, when you think about Kobe Bryant, and you think about Tiger Woods, right? Nike stood by them. When all those other sponsors and all those other people bailed on those athletes, right? Because, you know, I get it, right? You don't want your name and your brand and your company associated with negative stuff like that. But what Nike knew was that, like, they not only did they, you know, was, was this thing, you know, temporary, but they also knew that like the brand itself of that person was much bigger and it will outlast the current situation. And so when you're thinking about your business startup nation and you're thinking about, you know, uh, temporary things or things that are 
or knee jerk reactions. Think about how it will play long term because that's what Nike has always done. They're doing the same thing here with Colin Kaepernick. They have always done this. This is not new. Like I said, going back to Tiger Woods, when Gillette bailed on him, when Gatorade get bailed on him, when all those other you know, sponsors bailed on him, Nike stuck with them. Now, granted, Nike has recently got rid of his golf division, but they still made a buttload of money with Tiger Woods. Same thing with Kobe Bryant. He had that infidelity issue in Colorado, but they stuck with him and they reaped the benefits. Nike did because Nike, and I don't know about the Tiger Woods part or the Kobe Bryant part, because like, I can't really fought that part right like they did something wrong they you know did what they had to do whatever the case may be but when it comes to Colin Kaepernick he's not a criminal he has not broken any laws he basically just did something that was fundamentally resembling uh zim- resembles how this country was built this country was built on both protest right so what Nike has decided to do once again what it has always done is to bet on the rebellious to bet on Somebody who is willing to, you know, believe in something, even if it means sacrificing something, because that's what Nike did. They've always done that. And so when you think about not only understanding that this is temporary, Nike wants to be on the right side of history. Think about Muhammad Ali. Right now, when we think about Muhammad Ali, everybody has this very great image of this guy who stood to his guns civil rights leader no besides the boxer let's put the boxer aside for a minute but the civil rights leader is a person who said no no Viet Cong ain't never called me the n-word why would I go fight them I ain't got nothing against them he stuck to his guns and he was vilified in the moment but we don't we don't vilify him now do we no we do not same thing with Martin Luther King he was vilified at the moment we don't vilify him now do we Hell, if you you want to go biblically, Jesus Christ was was, you know, vilified in the moment. We don't vilify him now, do we? No, we don't. And so Nike knows that this is temporary and they want to be on the right side of history because they know that, you know, what he's doing is right. They know this. And all these people say, oh. You know, he, he's he's going to damage, they're damaging their brand. Not, people are going to, Nike, this will be the end of Nike. No, it won't. It will not. And I'll get into why in a little bit here, but it won't. It just won't. And so another reason Nike did this is very is a very simple one. It also speaks to the long-term nature of when you're talking about building a business and being lucrative in a business, right? You have to think about not right now, right, but down the road. Now, granted, Nike is taking hits in their stock, but so are the other shoe companies, too. But that's neither here nor there, you know, because the thing is, in the stock market, whatever the case may be, a lot of times when one one sector falls, a lot of other, you know, uh, companies in that sector also fall, too. So when Nike was falling, Adidas fell as well. Reebok, a little bit, too. You know, which I I will also say this and keep in mind, I am not a financial planner when it comes to investing. Make sure you seek out a certified financial planner. Do not do exactly what I'm saying, saying like I'm an investor or a financial planner. Don't take my advice. But what I'm saying is what I would do is that if if you believe in Nike and you see the dip in the stock price, it would be a great time to buy because that's what people do. Buy low, sell high. So this may be an opportunity for you, those of you in Startup Nation who like to invest in the stock market to do that. Once again, seek out somebody who's a certified financial planner for you, all your investment advice. Just saying that's what I would do. What Nike is also thinking about is the long term. They're not just thinking about Colin Kaepernick and how it plays right now. They're thinking about the 17, 18 year old superstar, five star prospect that's in high school right now. The 16 year old five star prospect that's in high school right now. Now, how does that relate to this? Well, think about it. When you are Nike or Reebok or Under Armour or whatever the case may be, and you're trying to get these kids to sign with your brand, you put on these presentation videos. You invite them to New York or wherever your office is, put on this real, you know, dramatic, you know, sometimes like Oscar worthy presentation videos to convince them to join the brand, join Nike, join Adidas, join Reebok, join Under Armour, right? And so what Nike can do now with this move is say, hey, 17, 18-year-old five-star prospect, 
we can offer you a lot of money and that's great. So can other companies. But you know what we can also say and what we have proven? We were the first shoe company or apparel company, however you want to look at Nike. We were the first sports company to back a social, to back Colin Kaepernick. We did that. Not Under Armour, not Reebok, not Adidas. Now, granted, those companies may come back behind them and do that, but Nike can say we the ones who, are, who, who first did that, which means that if you decide when you become a superstar athlete and you know in the NFL or the NBA or whatever the case may be, you know for a fact where we stand and you know we're going to back you. As long as you're not doing something too drastic and too uh, just crazy, you know when it comes to social change, we got you. And to a 17, 18 year old impressionable kid, that's going to matter. Especially when you're talking about, you know, police brutality in the African American community. Because when you talk about those 17, 18 year old kids, most of those kids look like Colin Kaepernick. And that's who Nike is placing their bet on. And like I said, Startup Nation, this goes back to what I was saying earlier. When you're talking about building a business, you can't think about how things are going to play right now. I mean, that's important. But that can't be the main focus. You got to think about long term. How would this play a year from now, five years from now? Because in this age of social media, you know, things change quick. People will forget about you quick. But in this case, that can be a good thing. Right. And so a lot of times, you know, people were saying, like, look, this is going to be the end of Nike. No, it won't. It won't be the end of Nike. And I can prove it because the thing is. When people were saying about Nike, Nike released some demographic numbers. 16% of the paying demographic at Nike, 16% is African American. 19% is Latin American. You know, Hispanic. 5% is Asian. Now, 6 to 7% is white. But the thing is, like those people of color, more than likely side with Colin Kaepernick. And even if you took maybe half of the white population... That, that 72% is actually 72%, not 67%, 67%. That 72%, probably half of them are going to side with Colin Kaepernick. They just are. No, I had it right, 67%, 67%. Mo- most of that 67% is going to side with Colin Kaepernick. About half, at least. Because it's mostly those young white kids who are like, you know, who are a little bit more accepting. Because that's the thing is about Generation Z. They're a little bit more accepting about differences and understanding like, you know, certain things are bad. When you talk about the people who are burning shoes and cutting Nike signs off socks and stuff like that. Nike only accounts for about 6% that that white male over 40. Those are the ones that are more than likely who have an issue with this. Nike is willing to lose those people. You're like, you know what? We have a big enough brand. We'll be okay. Even though Nike is not the number one shoe company in the world, it has the number one brand in the world when it comes to shoes, sports apparel, things of that nature. Nike will be okay. They're not upset about that. They will be just fine. And so not only that, Nike is also you know, re-upped with the NFL to provide Nike uniforms through 2028. And then it's not just that. They also just signed with the NBA. I believe they're doing their jerseys now. And also, you have to think about all of those colleges, right? University of North Carolina, Duke, uh, not UCLA because I think they were Adidas. But all those colleges that also have Nike contracts, basketball and football, and even in other sports. And the thing is, you're not going to mess that up because that's where most of that revenue comes from, from Nike. It's not most. It's not a lot of it coming from the tennis shoe you know, people going in the Foot Locker or Foot Action, whatever the case may be, in Pine Tennis Shoe. No, 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 no. Most of it comes from those contracted bulk deals, multi-year deals. That's where a lot of their money comes from, right? And so, you know who else is not going to give that up? Those coaches and those ADs. You want to know why? Because, let's say, let's take football, for instance, right? You know how you have, especially in Oregon, you know how Oregon has all those Really cool uniforms and helmets and stuff like that. Obviously because Phil Knight's from Oregon. He went to the University of Oregon. Wherever the case may be, right? So they're going to have a little bit more than most people, right? But like here in University of Memphis, 
right? We got a whole bunch of different helmets, a whole bunch of different uniforms, and they look cool. And those coaches and ADs use those uniforms to help recruit those players, right? You know, the 17 to 18-year-old five-star prospects we talked about, they use those tactics, those brands. Like, look, bruh, like we went, you know, we might not win a lot of games, but you're going to look fresh as hell on this field, though. That's a recruitment tactic. And so, like I said, those coaches are not going to give that up. Those ADs are not going to say, nope. Because if it if it brings that five star on campus, you, you damn well please think they're gonna get that Nike swoosh on the back of that helmet, on the side of that jersey, on them cleats and socks. Absolutely. So this whole notion that Nike is, is about to be over is just it's just not not about to happen. It's the number one brand when it comes to shoe apparel and, and uh, sports apparel in the world, and that's not about to change anytime soon so startup nation you know as you can see that was kind of like a you know a a take on like sports the business side of sports and which that kind of brings me to uh you know an idea i had while i was on break about having a sports biz podcast you know i'm going to kind of you know vet that out a little bit see what that looks like but it's basically trying to present the sports you know i'm sorry the business side of sports which brings me to my next segment before we go to break Le'Veon Bell I'm hearing a lot of people and even teammates now which is why I actually decided to bring this up you know starting to say stuff about Le'Veon Bell all team loyalty you know he's only out for the money or whatever the case may be I think it's rather interesting how when it comes to general managers or even athletic directors on college campuses, but definitely when it comes to owners and general managers of professional sports, it's a business. You understood it's a business, this, that, and the other. But when it comes to the athlete, you know, the person who's actually, you know, making those people money, all of a sudden it's about loyalty. Now, don't get me wrong. Like, I understand that, you know, when you play as part of a team and something, there is a sense of loyalty. Let me be clear about that. Like that matters. Camaraderie, cohesion, that matters in a locker room. But it is also a business for that athlete as well. Right? And so when we think about Le'Veon Bell and talking about how, you know, he should be glad that he's making this money and he should be glad that he's a Pittsburgh Steeler and that he should be, you know, just glad that he doesn't have to, you know, uh, struggle and this, that, and the other. That's BS. That's BS. This man accounts for over 40% of the Pittsburgh Steelers offense. That has market value, my friend. And, you know, the thing is, is that, you know, people are upset because he's holding out. Le'Veon Bell is using what is within the CBA rights to do what's best for him. Now, he may end up going back to the team earlier, whatever the case may be. I heard reports that he's going to report the day before uh, the game with the Browns, I believe. But if he want, if he chooses to do that, that's fine. If he decides to stay out till after week 10, I believe that's fine too. Loyalty is only as good as long as the check clears. Now, I know that sounds terrible. Right. Especially if you're a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. But the thing is, this man has earned the right to make whatever he felt like he is worth. Whether he feel like he's doing it the right way or not, that's beyond me, because the thing is, I'm not out there in the hot ass sun working out with him. I am not having those injuries that he has because we know everybody in the NFL is hurt, even if they're not on the injury report, they're always hurt, you know. This man has a family to think about. He has future generations to think of. Yeah, maybe you do make, I don't know, know, $14 million a year, which I think is what the tender is. But if I'm broken the hell up, I can't enjoy that with my my kids and my family. So I'm going to maximize my earning potential to the greatest ability. And this is the entrepreneurial mindset. It's the same thing Kirk Cousins did. Like, they put, the Redskins put Kirk Cousins on that tender, what, two years straight? And he's like, no, 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 I'm going to bet on myself because I think I can get more money. And here we are, you know, now he's getting ready to start for the Vikings, three years, $84 million. He's earned that. 
I'm not exactly sure what Le'Veon Bell is asking. But the thing is, like, whatever he feel like he's asking, he feel like he's earned that. And he has every right to pursue if somebody's willing to pay him that. Because, once again, this man accounts for over 40% of the offense, which means there is market value. Now, granted, maybe he doesn't he ha- does not have as much market value as the quarterback. Some would argue that is about the same. But when you ask him to run the ball 436 times in a season, on top of like what 70, 75 receptions in that same season, he's putting in a lot of work. He really is putting in a lot of work. And so I have no issue with him, you know sitting out to after week 10 if that's something he wants to do because the thing is per the cba if if the steelers are willing to use the cba that tender to their advantage then Le'Veon bell should have the a absolute right to use it his advantage too so if you want to put him on that 14 million dollar tender whatever the case may be all right fine then he has also every right to stay out to after week 10 so that way he can become a free agent and go get the money that he feel like he deserves. So we're going to go ahead and go to break. I hope you like that new twist to the show that we've added. We're not going to do it every week, but we'll try something here on out. But once again, my name is Dominic Lawson, and you're listening to The Startup Life. a teacher looking for great resources look no further than our teaching with our section of our website enjoy great lessons such as our mini lesson for the story of an hour or dive into the nixon presidency as part of our legacy series enjoy great peace of mind from our units as they are common core line click the link in the show notes to purchase all right started nation so let's continue so let's jump right into you know some of the signs it may be time for you to take a break okay because when you're building a company you put all your energy and your focus into this thing you're trying to build, right? That sometimes, you know, we kind of do a little bit of damage to ourselves, And that's the first thing I want to mention, right? It's like the, one of the first signs that you may need to take a break is that it starts affecting your health. And I've talked about this in past episodes of The Startup Life. But look, man, if you got a situation where you're like if you take medication you forget to take the medication or you feel mentally drained and it like it starts to affect like your your physical health like your heart or your liver or if you start you know you depressed and you start drinking and then that like affects your health or whatever the case may be like bruh it's time to take a break because like no company no dream no idea is worth you you should not leverage yourself to the point where you start to have to like go to the doctor more frequently you have to start you know pop you know taking pain medication more recent no more frequently because you got headaches or whatever the case may be right look this opioid situation in our country it's real and startup nation like i don't i don't don't give a damn if you do have a deadline or whatever the case may be your health is more important than your company right which, like I said, I know it sounds like an antithesis of this show, but like, look, I'm not for the advocate for you to drown yourself into the damn ground to build a company. OK, so when you start feeling yourself feeling like sick or you're taking more medication than normal, where the case may be, take a break. I don't want to lose your startup nation, but more importantly, neither does your family or your friends and your loved ones. They don't want to lose you either. Another reason is that if you can't stay focused, because the thing is, is like a lot of times we try to will ourselves 
to the finish line or will ourselves to a deadline or whatever the case may be, right? Which sounds very heroic in TV shows and movies, but a lot of times in real life, it can be quite detrimental, right? Because like if you can't stay focused, like the, the company is going to suffer any damn way, okay? And so you might as well go ahead and just like shut it down. Even if it's just for like 30 minutes, guy. Even if it's like 30 minutes, go outside, take a break. Like go, go, go read a book. Go, go shoot some ball. Go, go, go for a walk around your office park or wherever the case may be. Like sometimes like you just got to like take a breather. Now, if you have one of those, um, those physically demanding companies that you're trying to build, like my boy Roy Rogers, at air conditioning and heating, you know, and his company, Right. Like maybe you do the opposite. Maybe you do something not as physically demanding. By the way, go hit him up for all your air conditioning and heating needs. Does really good work. Very professional and is very knowledgeable about his craft. People like go go check him out. But if you have like a company like that where it's very physically demanding, maybe you do the opposite of that. Right. Go ahead. You know, go get down to your neighborhood game. Stop. Get you some 2K or Madden, whatever the case may be, and just take a day and just mellow out. Right. And just chill for a minute. Right. You know, if video games, if you think do that or if if uh, if cooking is something that brings you peace. Right. Do that as well. The point is, is that like you cannot, you know, stay focused sometimes if you just try to will yourself to victory. Right. Because like after a while, like, you know, your vision, both literally and metaphorically, starts to get a little blurry in your company. And so you start to make those mistakes. So if you feel yourself not being able to focus, you know, that could be a telltale sign. Also, if you feel like, you you know, we talk about willing ourselves, like it's hard to motivate you. Like this is the, this idea for your company. Nine times out of 10 is like this thing that like, you know, you can't get out of your head, especially when you first start. Right. We talk about all the time on this show how if you're on your job, your nine to five job and you got this idea that just keep pegging at you and it like it just won't leave like you're motivated. But sometimes Startup Nation, as you get to year two, three, four or hell, even in year one where you're not making as much money as you thought you was going to make, it's hard to get motivated. And so sometimes you got to step away for a minute to kind of get that motivation back. Now, let me be clear about something. I was, I you know, like I said, I had always had every intention to come back to the startup life. I really did. And motivation was not an issue. Okay. But what I will say is that when I saw people come up to like, bruh, like when you make it another episode, man, I love the startup life. You, you've helped me out so much is motivating it helps you know it it gives me ideas of my company like that part is motivating to me and you're not gonna really get that if you're just so focused on you know the task at hand sometimes when you step away you you get reignited right you get refocused if you you get re-motivated to do this thing that you really like doing and sometimes we get beaten down by the negatives in our company right to where that motivation just slowly erodes at you. It slowly beats you down. It slowly probably tells like, you can't build it. You're not going to do it. It's not going to work out. And that fucking little small voice creeps in and it erodes at your, at your confidence. It erodes at that motivation, right? And so when you start hearing that voice, it's time to like probably step away for a little bit, Okay. It's probably time to like, you know what, you know, my, my, my entrepreneurial spirit is a little low right now. I need to step away so we can, you know, go hit that gas tank and refill that bad boy because I know Q4 is coming and I, and I got a lot of stuff I, I'm trying to accomplish. So I'm going to go and take this, I'm going to take this week break or this day break or this 30 minute break or whatever the case may be. But when I come back, when I come back, bro, it's on. It's on like Donkey Kong, and I'm going to smash this deadline. I'm going to smash this contract. I'm going to land this contract. I'm going to get more customers. I'm going to get more leads. I'm going to get more referrals. And sometimes all it takes for you to get to that point, Startup Nation, is to just step away. Just step away. So remember that. If you feel like you're losing motivation or whatever the case may be, just step away. Just step away. Another thing, Startup Nation, you know, a sign that you may need to step away is that if you start missing out on 
certain personal events, right? Now, I've been on this show for a while now, and I, I said, like, look, sometimes I have to tell my family and friends, like, look, I want to come to the barbecue. I want to come to the family gathering, you know, but it's like right now, like this needs my focus, right? But every once in a while, Startup Nation, you need to go to that gathering. Like, life requires balance. Like, I get it. Like, you're you, you going to have to miss some of those things sometimes. You can't go to all of them. You just can't. Because that's what you're really telling your friends and your loved ones and your family. Like, I can't go to all of them. I can't go to this one. But, like, sometimes, like, maybe somebody's graduation or something like that. Like, that that's one of those, those monumental moments in somebody's life. You probably need to try to make that one. Maybe not necessarily the... The food gathering that you're going to have after the fact. But like the graduation itself, you probably want to be there. Spouse's anniversary, not negotiable. Like you better have your ass at the restaurant with some reservations, my friend. You know, and that goes for husband and wives. Like anniversary, that, that's 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 a no-go. Okay. But if you start getting to a point where you're thinking about missing anniversaries, you probably need to take a break. Take a break. Because, you know, besides the fact that, you know, you, you're going to have an angry spouse on your hand the anger spouse is going to leak into your head and that 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 you know part of your anger spouse being upset with you is going to affect the performance in your business any damn way so you might as well go ahead and take that break when you start thinking about missing personal in you know uh invitations like even right now right like right now here in the city of memphis like we're going to have this thing called the southern heritage classic it's something that goes on every year Either like the 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 uh, usually like I believe like the second Saturday in September, right? But here I am with you, Startup Nation, and I got a lot of people who who said, Dominic, come 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 check out the game, or come check out the parade, and it's like, bro, I want to, I want to, but I had an obligation to Startup Nation. I told them I would be back. I told them be back at a certain time. I've already flaked on them once. So I can't miss it. OK, you know, and I've already taken out. I, I've been gone for three months. I've already taken out you know, a lot of personal time to kind of like scale the business, have fun with family, as any case may be. But at, at a certain point, I had to come back. So that's where I'm at. But you don't want to. My point is, you don't want to miss too many personal, you know, events. Right. Because you don't want your friends and your loved ones and your spouses and your partners or whatever the case may be to resent you for that. And they'll resent your business because you don't want them to be like. Yeah, your business is cool and all, but like I kind of resent your business, even though you excited for it about it and I'm excited for you. But I resent you and your business, man, because like we had some times where we could have been hanging out. We really could have been hanging out. So start a nation, find that balance. Try not to miss out on a whole bunch of, you know, those personal uh, events and this, that and the other. And lastly, start a nation, you know, before we move on to our last segment, if you start to have like a bad you know, relationship with your team and your and your and the people that your team members, the people that work for you and the people who have helped you get your business to the point where it is. It's time to take a break. It's time to take a break, because let me explain something to you. Your business would not be where it is without those people that I just talked about. Your business would be shit. It's that simple. Those people have have placed their their you know, confidence and leadership in you. But at the same time, they took a gamble on you, my friend. They took a gamble on you. And so you don't treat the people that took a gamble on you like any kind of way. No, 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 no. Your team members are the most important asset in your business. And I know I've talked about this ad nauseum, Startup Nation, but you, you, I have to because this is so important. I don't, I'm not talking about equipment. Cash registers, product, you know, service, whatever the case may be. The most important asset in your company, in your business, are the people that you employ, are the people that you partner with, are the people outside of you as the founder, CEO, or whatever you want to call yourself. They are the most important people to your company. They are, they're actually more important than the customer, believe it or not. Because they bring the customer. Like I get it. It's, it's hard to have that direct lineation. That the customer is more important. It ain't the customer. It's the people that are that help build your company. Because the thing is. If you take care of the people that help build your company. They'll take care of the customers. That's not a problem. It's like I tell teachers when it comes to students. 
Don't focus on the teacher. Don't focus on the students, which I know sounds bad. But if you focus on the teachers, if, the, if you make sure the teachers are, are, are okay and they're taken care of, they'll take care of the students, which means you're ultimately taking care of the students. So if you take care of your people and you don't treat your employees and your partners and your team members like crap, they're going to take care of the customers and they're ultimately going to take care of you. And so those are the last people you want to piss off. If you're starting to piss them off, if you've started rubbing them the wrong way, if you're starting to have these actions that you take that puts them in their feelings, especially if it's one of those things where it's like you being petty or you are being uh, you know, upset and, and frustrations are leaking out to them. You need to take a break. Go go take your tail on somebody's beach, you know, man-made or naturally made, and and take a break. Because what you don't want to have is a full-blown mutiny on your hands and what's going to happen to your company. Like, granted, I mean, you know, you could hire somebody else, but that costs money. It's a lot cheaper to just keep the people that's in place than to hire brand new people. So remember that startup nation. You start to like treat those people like crap. Take a break. Go get on somebody beach. Go to Destin. Go to Orange Beach. I'm in the South, so I'm naming beaches in the South. But you know, go to Biloxi. You know, go to Galveston, Texas. Whatever you got to do. But don't treat your people like crap. And if you treat them like crap, take a break. And lastly, startup nation. You know, before we cut out for today, and I really hope you love today's episode, episode seventy five. Man, what a journey this has been. But I'll I'll get to that later. But, you know, we want to talk about the benefits of taking a break. Right. First and foremost, you know, one of the benefits is you get to reboot. You get to like, you know, it's like you and your brain, and your company is all is kind of like a, a computer. Right. And for my tech, my tech people out there, if I get this analogy wrong, forgive me. But you know where I'm going with. So a lot of times when you use a computer startup nation. Like you have all these bits and data, you know, that are like, you know, in your computer, obviously. Right. But over time, as you use the computer, those bits and data get scattered out. Right. And so when they get scattered, the more and more they get scattered out, the slower and slower your computer gets. Right. At least that's how it's explained to me. Tech people, if I'm wrong, please. And, you know, in the comment section or wherever you listen to this on Spotify or Apple I, uh, Apple Podcasts, wherever the case may be, correct me. But you know where I'm getting at with this. So as this data and bits get spread out over time, that's what makes your computer run a little slower, right? So what do you have to do every once in a while? Restart it, defragment it, reboot it, if you will, right? And so that's why it's important to take a break. Because sometimes your company needs a reboot. Sometimes your brain needs a reboot. Sometimes... Sometimes your employees need a reboot from you based on what I was talking about in the last segment. Like they need, you know, the ability to not just miss you, but to, you know, that you need a reciprocal, you know, type of, you know, uh, uh, what am I looking for? That whole thing about the absence, making the heart grow fonder. You both need that. You both need that. So when you get to, take a break you get to you know refocus retool recharge and that's a good thing startup nation you want to be able to do that so that's one of the benefits of taking a break another one is that you get to set the example okay because and what do i mean by that what i mean is is that like when you hired your 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 team i know you probably sold them on some work-life balance because it's a buzzword, right? It's one of those like, you know, oh, yeah, we offer work-life balance here, right? We understand the importance of, you know, family and work time, this, that, and the other. But you in here busting 90-hour weeks. Now, I get it, right? It's your company. You know, the buck falls with you, this, that, and the other. But when you are the founder and CEO of your company, you're also a leader. And your team is looking for that leadership, so if they see you busting 90 hour weeks, you know, and you told and you sold them on work life balance, you know, that's a bit of a hypocritical move. And so that look of a leadership starts to erode from you ever so often. Right. It's like, how are you going to tell me to take a break or, you know, this that, and the other? But he busting 90 hundred hour weeks. Right now, granted, Startup Nation, I get it. Like sometimes sometimes you got to put the cape on. 
sometimes you got you have like, you know what? I'm I'm gonna dig us out of this hole where the case may be, and that's fine. That's fine. If you do that every so often, that is okay. But if you're doing this every week, first of all, you need to reevaluate some processes in the business that's forced you to do 90 hours a week. Maybe we ain't delegating enough. But at the same time, it's like, like I said, it's hypocritical to your team. You can't say you value work-life balance when you don't exhibit work-life balance. That's not how this works. Okay. So make sure that like, you know, one of the benefits that you understand is that you set the example with your work-life balance, right? So that's super important. That's super important. And so, and that also makes you human. People are not going to follow people they can't relate to. They need to understand that, hell, even you need a break too. They need to understand that. Also, Startup Nation, when you reboot, you know, that we talked about earlier, you also get a, a you know, a big boost in brain power because you get to rest. Like, resting is so underrated in this in this you know in this life of entrepreneurship that is not even funny okay because you know you need to just like you need like physical rest you know like you know you need that six to eight hours roughly here or there but at the same time you need a mental rest as well your brain needs to rest it needs to like stop working I mean, think about it. If you just if you had a if you have a car and you just keep running the engine, you're wearing tearing on that engine. Sometimes you gotta give it a break. It needs to rest. And you know, you so more you more so than the car because you're a human being. It's a machine. So if a damn machine needs to rest, you obviously need the rest too. And your brain will be beneficial, you know, will receive beneficial, you know, factors from resting. And so when you do rest, you get to think about some of the things in the business. We always talk about, you know, you know, in entrepreneurial circles, there's a difference between working on the business and working in the business. OK, and so when you're not resting, you're working in the business. You can't see it from a bird's eye view. So you can't see if certain processes don't work. You can't see if, if, if you know, if something's going terribly wrong. But when you're working on the business and you're taking a break from it, you get that boost in brain power. And this allows you to work on the business. You get to see the bird's eye view. You get to see what may be working and not working. And if something is working, then we need to amplify that success. OK, also, you know, in this day and age, one of the benefits of taking a break or maybe a quasi break in this example is that like in this day and age if your a company is where it's like it's uh, all about like, you know, you can run it from a laptop. Take your laptop to the beach like there's Wi-Fi spots all over the place like there's nothing more, you know, exhilarating and helpful to your company is when you work from somewhere outside of the norm It's why why certain teachers take class outside especially if it's like a nice day because you're 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 boosting the prefrontal cortex's ability to process information because you're in a different environment right and so go go you know i mean i'm not saying go to a a coffee shop i mean a coffee shop can be beneficial if you want to but that's neither here nor there that's not necessarily my expertise i mean like go to a park Go to a beach. Go to somewhere that's out of the norm of the typical nine to five office space. And that can be extremely beneficial to you and your company, Startup Nation. It really can. And lastly, Startup Nation, you know, understand that when you take one of the benefits of of taking a break is that it forces you to delegate those 90 hours a week that we're talking about. Now, those those team members that you've entrusted in those positions are now forced to help you out. Delegate to accumulate. If you're if if you're the one man band or you're acting like a one man band when you got seven other people in the band with you and you're trying to do all this work, you're not gaining much ground. I'm not going to say sit up here and say you're not gaining any ground, but you're not really gaining a whole lot of ground, okay? You you're really not. I mean, that's why we have those cliche ass phrases about teamwork makes the dream work because cliches are cliches because they are true if you have more people working on a common goal 
you can get the common code common goal done a lot faster than you just trying to put the cape on your back all the time so one of the benefits of taking a break is that you're forcing those other people not saying that they're lazy or something like that right but you're forcing them to take on more leadership more work more responsibility right because when you give them that responsibility and that leadership they appreciate that your team members will appreciate that it's like this dude trust me that he can go on vacation and not worry about nothing because you hired them to do that startup nation you hired them to put you in a position to where even if i left for two weeks three weeks six months a year even the company would be just fine because you empowered your team to do that so when you take a break because you know you need one startup nation when you take a break these are some of the benefits that you can get you reboot that brain of yours which ultimately leads to a boost of brain power and you and you empower people to empower themselves because you're gone ain't got no choice now but you also set the example that you know if you truly believe in work-life balance, you're, you take work-life balance opportunities as well. So here's my final take. Every once in a while, Startup Nation, we need to take a break from our company. We need to take a break from our business. Your, benef- your business would be better off for it. Your employees would be better off for it. Your team members would be better off for it. I try to make it a point to say team members instead of employees. Um, your friends and family and your spouse will be better off for it. But more importantly, Startup Nation, you will be better off for it. Like this this thing we call life is finite. It truly is. And so if you take all of this upon yourself, Startup Nation, like I'm sorry, you may not you may not stick around with us too much longer. So I believe if you, you know, take all these things into account into your company into your business, into building your dream, and into your life, I believe that you will take a break and you will be benefited from it in the long term. So that's going to do it for us on this episode of the Startup Life, Startup Nation. Thank you so much for having me back. I promise I'll try not to be gone as long this time, next time I take a break. But, you know, with all that being said, Startup Nation, thank you. This is episode 75. Thank you for taking this journey with me. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you for being patient with me while I was gone. But just thank you for being you. But more importantly, I am thankful for you because you decided to take life by the horns and build your company, build your dream, build your destiny. Not everybody's willing to do that, Startup Nation. But the thing is that I know you. I've known you long enough to know that like nothing scares you. Nothing is going to hold you back. And ultimately, you're going to build the company that you see in your vision. If you want to let us know what you think about the show, have an idea for a show topic, or would like to advertise on our show, send us a message on the Startup Life Podcast Facebook page. And while you are there, like and follow our page as well. It's a new way for us to engage with you, Startup Nation, and really grow our community. The link is here in the show notes. To subscribe to the show, as it can now be heard on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, iHeartRadio and SoundCloud. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts and you find our content valuable, please give us a five-star rating as it will help us climb the charts and help more people find our show. And hey, if you have an idea, be about that life, the startup life.